In this lesson, we'll look at three different examples for using inner and outer joins within data sets. For my first example, I'd like to show you how to join two completely unrelated tables. I'm going to come out here to my employees table and go ahead and open it up. And you can see that we have nine employees. And each of the, one of these employees has a bit of information about them, including the city where the employee lives. If I come out here and take a look at my suppliers, which is completely unrelated to employees, I can see that the suppliers also happens to have a city field out here. Now what I'd like to do is join these two together in a query and then query my employees who happen to live in the same cities as my suppliers. I'll start this by coming up to the Create tab and choosing Query Design. And then in the Show Table box, I will pull up my Suppliers table, and I will also pull up my Employees table. Click on Close. And you can see if I look at these, they are completely unrelated. There are no ID fields that will match, but that doesn't matter to access. I can go ahead and grab the City field here and drag it over to the City field inside of Employees, and it creates a join line. And if I come out now and I pull in the company name for my supplier, and I'll pull in the last name for an employee, and then just to see the cities where they match, I'll pull in the city for the supplier and I'll pull in the city for the employee. And now when I come out and run these, I can see that London is the only city that's in common between the two tables. That is, if it looks at all the cities for all the employees and it looks at all the cities for all the different suppliers, the only ones that match are London. And I can see that I have four employees that have London as their home address and I only see exotic liquids as my only supplier that resides in London. Now in the results of my data set let's say that I'd like to see all of my suppliers company names regardless of whether they have a matching city over here within my employees table or vice versa. I'd like to see all of my employees names regardless of whether they have a hometown that is also the same as the company name. I want to see all my employees regardless. We do this using what's called an outer join. Let's go back into design view. Now the default join you're going to get is what's called an inner join. And all that means is that it's only going to pull records where the records match on the join field. And we saw that a moment ago with London. But if I were to come out here and double click on the join line or if I were to right click and choose join properties it brings up the Join Properties dialog. And then from here, I could come out and I could say, all right, number one is the inner join. And that's only going to show records where the join fields are equal. But if I were to choose number two or number three, this is an outer join. And in the case of number two, it says, I want to show all the records from suppliers, regardless of whether the city matches on this side or number three, which says, I want to see all of the records from employees, whether the city matches on the other side as well. So I'm going to start with number two here. I'm going to go ahead and click OK. And now we see an arrowhead on one side or the other of the join line. And that tells us that we have an outer join. And now when I go ahead and run this again, I look at my data set and I will see all of my company names for my suppliers regardless of whether they have a matching city on the other side. And when I don't have a matching city, I will just see blank information under the employee city or the employee last name. Trying this again, I will come out to my join line. I will double click the join line to bring up the join properties. And I will choose number three, which says show me all of my employees regardless of the city. I'll click OK. I see the arrowhead on the other side now. And when I click on run, I will see all of my employees, all nine employees, regardless of whether they have a matching city in the supplier side. And the company name is left blank, indicating that they don't have a matching city as well. In my second example, I'd like to show you the same thing, but we're going to be working with a larger data set. When you're working with a larger data set, it's not always easy to tell if there are missing records because fields don't match using the inner join. 
I'm going to come up here and take a look at my customers table and if I double click on customers to open it up I can see that I have 91 customers out here in my customers table. Likewise I'd like to see the orders that these customers have placed. So I'm going to click on the orders table and under the orders table I can see that I have 830 records. Like before let's build a query and take a look at joining these guys up with uh, an inner or outer join. Start by query design. I'm going to go ahead and pull in the customers table and likewise I will pull in the orders table. And we can see by default they automatically hook up on the customer ID. Now the automatic join took place because these two tables already have a relationship that was built ahead of time out here in the relationships window. Therefore, anytime we pull these two tables up in a query, um, Access already knows that they go together and it's going to hook them up on the corresponding field that where they are in common. In this case, it's the customer ID. So just like before, I'll come out and pull in the company name from customers and I'll pull in the order ID from the orders table and I'll go ahead and run my query. Click on view. It runs the query in the background and I see that I have my 830 records. But if I have a customer who hasn't placed any orders, they're not going to have a customer ID in the orders table and they will not show up here. But it's not always obvious because you can't see any blank cells out here if that were to take place. You wouldn't know. So how can I fix this? Well just like before I'll go to design view. I'll come out here and double click the join line and I'll choose number two which says show me all the records from customers. I'll click OK. I see the arrowhead pointing into orders and when I come out here and I click on run I will see that I no longer have 830 records, but I have two more 832. So there's an additional two records that show up. And if I just happen to take my time and just scroll down here real quick, I'll see there's that record out here that's missing an order ID. We know that this customer doesn't have any orders out here. Now, because this is such a large table, to be able to scan through this and visually point those out can almost be impossible sometimes. So what I'll do is go back to my design view. And inside of here, I'm going to go under the order ID. I'm going to say, only show me those records in my record set where the order ID is null, meaning it's empty. And when I go ahead and run this again, I will see there are my two records that don't have order IDs. Therefore, these are my two customers that currently don't have any orders in the orders table. For my third example, I'd like to just add more tables out into the mix here. I want to keep the two tables I have, customers and orders, but I'm going to go ahead and just take out this is null criteria, and I'm going to go to the join line and double click, and I'll turn this back into an inner join. Now remember, the inner join is number one, the outer joins are number two or three, depending upon which side of the fence you want to look on. I'm going to go ahead and click OK, and I'm back to my join line. Now I'm going to right click my empty part of my query and choose show table, and I'm going to pull in the order details, and I'm going to pull in the products table as well. And under order details, I can see that I have the quantity. And for products, I have the product name. So I'm going to come out here and double click on product name. And I'm also going to pull in the uh, quantity field so I can see how much was for a product was ordered um, on each one of the orders out here. And when I run the data set, run the query, I'll see that I have 2155 records in my record set. Let's go back to design view. And this time I want to pull those two records up where the customers don't even have any orders. So I'm going to do just like before, double click and I'm going to choose number two, show all the records from customers. I'm going to click OK and now when I go ahead and run my query, I'm going to go ahead and get this error. Um, because we have these multiple tables out here, we're going to get this uh, ambiguous outer joins error taking place. Here's how we fix this. I'll start by coming out here and turning this back into an inner join. Choose number one. And I'm also going to include the customer ID out here. I'll just drop it right here in front of order ID. I'll pull in the customer ID from the customers table. And I'm going to go ahead and close and save this query. So I'll go ahead and click on the close button. It asks to save, I'll say yes, and I'm just going to call this triple Z just so we can easily identify it out here in my queries area. I'll go ahead and click OK. And now 
I'm going to come out here and build another query just like before. I'm going to click on Query Design. I'm going to pull in the Customers table just like before, but this time instead of pulling in another table, I'm going to go to the Queries area here in the Show table, and I'm going to ask it to pull up ZZZ, and I'll click on Add, click on Close, and there is my record set from the previous query. Now basically what's happening here when, when I pull in a query um, inside of another query, I nest a query in other words, when Access runs the query, it's going to run this nested query first and pull in the data set that's completed from the first query before it tries to join it up with the customer's table. And this will get rid of that ambiguous join stuff. So I'm going to come out here and I'm going to go ahead and pull in the company name. And then also from my ZZZ query, I'll go ahead and pull in the order ID, the product name, and the quantity field. And now from here, when I run this, it runs and I get my 2155 records out here. Go back to Design View, just like before, I'll double click the Join line, go to number two to say Show All Records from Customers. I'll click OK, and now when I go ahead and run this thing, it will show me all of the records, including the two, 2155 to 2157, it includes those two records. And just like before, if I go out to Design and under Order ID, if I click in the criteria and type in Is Null out here, when I come back out here and run this again, I'll see my two records, and since they don't have any orders or any products on those orders, these are left blank.